Cool, so that was a waste of time because my pin has changed. I received a new card recently, and apparently I don't have it in my password database. I have the old pin, which is not helpful. So I'm going to need to figure that out because I actually do need cash tomorrow. So I guess now is a great time to talk about my rant about cash. So I hate cash and rant now, huh? So I, I've always been the type of person to budget and save everything. I notice when I... Like, for an example, uh, when I was a kid, my mom took me to a bank to open up my first savings account. And I knew how much money was in there at all times. Mind you, I was eight. So, we're not exactly talking about an old age or anything like that. And the way I kept track of how much money I had was based off of how much money was in my bank. Even when I had cash, because again, I was eight, this would have been the 90s. Yeah, I was... Yeah, it would have been 1991. Um, you didn't exactly have non-cash-based transactions in the US at the time that weren't either a check or a credit card, which obviously an eight-year-old wouldn't have. So, the way it always worked is that the cash on me wouldn't be tracked. So one of the first things I would do when I would get cash is try to deposit it into my bank account. Uh, to the point where my grandparents actually thought that my mom was taking the money that they were giving me because I would hand it to my mom because she was going to the bank later on in the day. And I knew she would deposit it for me. I mean, I was getting my little... Uh, monthly reports on my savings account and everything, so it's not like I didn't know that it wasn't in there or not, and I was always keeping track of things because my mom was a bookkeeper, and that's one of the ways that she taught me how to keep track of money, was balancing the books. I didn't have a checkbook, obviously, so balancing the books is really easy at that point, but you get the idea. And whenever I would want money, I would either take money out of my account to spend it right then and there, or ask my mom to pick it up and I would refund her. Fast forward quite a bit to when I was getting, when I was in college. And one of the things that I had decided on after I moved my bank from the savings account that my mom started for me, yes, I actually kept that thing, to my first bank up in Indiana. And because I was a college student in the 2000s, that meant that there were a lot of predatory credit card companies that were out on campus. The main difference is that I did my research and figured out, hey, I don't have to pay any fees as long as I actually pay off my account balance. So that's the way I worked. I used my credit card so I would actually start gaining credit. Um, for some reason, it didn't dawn on me that I was gaining credit already by having a student loan. But I don't think that actually counts for credit until you start paying it back, something like that. Anyway. Um, I decided this was a good way to start building up credit. I knew that I was responsible because I was keeping meticulous track of my savings account, so why not, right? So I would use my credit card for most spending and pay off my credit card. And I was keeping track of my credit card balance, and it wasn't a problem. I didn't, I don't know what. The only times I ever had to pay an interest payment were because I literally forgot to submit my credit card payment. And they don't count as a late payment if you send it like the next day or something like that, but you do have to pay the finance charges on the bill, which I didn't exactly have much on there, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, what I did notice, however, is that my spending habits changed. And a lot of people's spending habits change when it comes to a credit card. I'm approaching a major road, one moment. Anyway, um, so the spending habits that changed were that I completely stopped paying attention to cash. So, and it didn't take me much to realize as to why. My budgeting method was keeping track of accounts, namely my credit card account and my bank account. So 
I would see a transaction that I would be withdrawing cash from the ATM and go, okay, that cash is now spent. That's the way my budgeting worked. So any cash that was in my wallet is already spent money. It is the opposite method that a lot of people use, apparently. And I only found this out about, um, would have been a few years into college when I was talking with a roommate that used the exact opposite strategy and only kept track of cash and money in the account went away. Um, apparently a lot of American teenagers, older teenagers slash young adults, don't keep track of money that they spend on a credit card because it's imaginary. They don't have any tangible connection with it. In my case, my connection was with the bank account statement, not with actual cash. And I suspect that you would find that uh, Gen Z folk and people that are of younger generations than I probably keep track of things the same way. It's always a digital transaction, so why would they keep track of cash? What this means is that I never keep cash on me. Um, let's see. Is there any cash in my wallet at all? None. No cash. Um... I do not keep cash on me because it's useless. It's already spent money, and I would much rather spend the exact balance that I'm going to be purchasing versus having to get cash and deal with change and all of that garbage. Not to mention in the US, our change is useless. <laughs> um, really the US should be eliminating all forms of currency that are smaller than a quarter, and honestly we should probably be eliminating the quarter as well and just go with dollars. There's not exactly a whole bunch left in the US that you can buy with a quarter. Heck, there's not even all that much you can buy with a dollar anymore. Um, candy, like a candy bar, that's really about it. Even soft drinks in a vending machine are usually a dollar or more now. But anyway, um, bit of a sidetrack, but long story short, I don't put value on, hold on. I don't really put value on cash. The reason why it bothers me so much is that the US, unlike every other country that I've ever dealt with, other than Japan, doesn't have a centralized mechanism for paying somebody money without using cash. And by somebody, I mean an individual, not a business, not a large corporation, just an individual. And I have somebody coming over tomorrow to mow my lawn. Because I don't even own a lawn mower. I'm not going to do it. I can't stand it. If I had my options, I wouldn't even have a lawn. But ripping out all the grass and planting it with native wildlife and letting it grow is way too much work for me. Plus I'm moving. So I'm letting somebody else take care of it and I'm paying them. And the only way to pay that individual in the US is with cash. So I need to actually get some cash that I don't have. <sighs> Whereas if I lived in any other country other than Japan, Japan's the only other country that I know of that's still that level of cash centric and they're actually more cash centric than the US. Any other country, the answer is I'll just transfer them money. The U.S. doesn't do it because the U.S. doesn't have any centralized banking. I mean, they do. They have centralized banking for banks. That's what the United States Federal Reserve is. It's a bank. It's just that the only people who deal with transactions with the Financial Reserve are banks. So it's a bank bank. So you can bank 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 bank. Anyway. Um, what that means is that there's no centralized system, there's no centralized place where you can validate an electronic transaction, which means all of the major banks in the US have their own system. I use credit unions, which are, for those of you outside the United States, a credit union is effectively a socialized bank. Um, it's not a banking corporation, it's a union. So it's made up of its members. Um, I am a member of a credit union, which means that I am technically a part owner of the said credit union. 
they pull all their money together. They hire some people to take care of all of the legal parts of being a bank. Uh, make sure that they have the insurance out. Basically, the union hires people to manage everything and effectively sets up their own corporation, except that all the profits for the bank go back into the union. That's what my interest payout is, and dividends from the bank. It's the my share of the profits from the union. But that also means that I don't have a great way of sending people money, because my credit union is not going to be using one of the electronic transaction systems from any of the major banks. I do have ways of sending people money. I just don't know if this person will be willing to receive it. On top of that, the more, shall we say, rural parts of the United States don't even go that far. Um, you can absolutely still find stores in the US that don't accept credit cards. I'm going to be traveling next week, which means I should probably have some cash on me in case if I run into one of those stores. Um, I'm not going to be the only person traveling, so push comes to shove, I could just ask one of them to take care of it and I'll pay them back or take care of the next one, that type of thing. But yeah, cash is dumb. And I do understand that there are benefits to cash. It's not like I'm blind to it or anything like that. If you want to exchange money without the government being able to track you, cash is king. Um, of course, if you're doing that, you probably need denominations so large that the briefcase full of money is not actually that far-fetched. So when you see those briefcases full of money on TV shows, one of those stacks is usually... Um, $5,000, I think it is. So it'd be a stack of 50 $100 bills. And in the US, $100 bill is our largest denomination of currency that's publicly available. There are larger denominations, but they're weird, special, and not in circulation. So circulation was the term I was trying to find. So the largest bill in circulation in the US is $100. If you're trying to buy a car, for an example, and the car might cost thirty or forty thousand dollars. You're going to need three hundred to four hundred of those bills. That's a lot of pieces of paper to go between two different individuals. I'm talking about buying a car from an individual, not buying a car from a dealership. Presumably, though, if you're paying new car price, you're probably not buying it. Although, hmm, used cars are. Stupid expensive in the US right now, maybe you are. Um, but anyway, point is, it gets difficult. I need to cross the road. Ha, just dawned on me. So the credit union that I'm going to, which is now owned by my credit union, but they haven't fully merged yet, is right next to the post office. Which last one of these vlogs was me recording my second trip to the post office after failing on my first trip. This time I'm recording my first trip to the ATM. That failed. And I won't be recording the second trip. So, interesting parallel. Anyway, that was a rant on cash. You know, the way I split it up, maybe I'm gonna do this as three separate videos. Yeah, we'll do it as three separate videos. So this is probably the third video that you're watching. Which means I haven't said good kitten yet. So good kitten internet. I'm not showing you any kittens at the moment because I'm outdoors. Although you probably saw a couple of doggos in the background. I know you saw one on this video, and I think you might have seen one on the previous video, so... Good doggos are nice, too. Um... Hmm, what else? What else is there even to talk about? I'm still noodling my way through trying to figure out how I'm doing the role-playing situation. It's annoying. If everybody was in person, this would be so much easier. But that was the topic for the previous video. I'm not going to go into that this video. Uh. Oh, and as an update, the three pieces of paper that I mailed on Monday for the first video of these this three vlog series 
Um, as of right now, they are in Norway. They've been in Norway since the start of day on Monday or on Friday. So they're in a suburb of Oslo right now. There is a reasonable chance that they will actually make it to my partner on time. There's also a chance they might not, and I might get all of that $100 back. That would be nice. Because, yes, postage for three pieces of paper was $100. Freaking ridiculous. If it was anything bigger, it would have actually been cheaper for me to fly there myself. Um, other updates. I don't really have any other updates. I still like the jacket. Um, didn't seem to need it because it's not even close to raining. But I can't take the jacket off because, let's see if you can see it. This is still jacket, like down here. So I would have to take the jacket off over my head. That's not going to work for a vlog. I didn't end up using the headphones the entire time either, I just noticed. Nor did I end up using the backpack that I have with me. It rolls up into a pouch. So, did this, so does this jacket, actually. So if I wanted to, I could have taken off the jacket, unrolled the backpack, put the jacket in the backpack by putting it into a pouch again, and just walked around with the backpack. This is what I'm planning on primarily bringing with me to New York for hiking and otherwise everyday travel. <sighs> yep, I think that's about it. Talk to you next time, Internet. Bye.